Hello everyone, today is 24th of August, Saturday, so I hope you have a wonderful day and a great weekend. Now it's 20 past 10 in the morning Moscow time. I'm Levan Gudadze and this is my first update for the day in which I will share all the main news that are making headlines in Russian media outlets and Russian language pages on different internet platforms. And there are quite a few very significant developments and uh, news that I like to share with you for this uh, moment. And uh, well, first of all, short summary of the situation on Ukrainian battlefield. Um, let's start with the uh, Kursk Salient that is uh, invaded by EU regime forces, also NATO forces, NATO so-called instructors and the mercenaries. And uh, as I said many times in previous updates, uh, operational control or the situation is in Russian hands. EU regime is deploying additional forces in the direction of the salient. Although despite all their attempts to renew advances of this invading force, the regime is failing, as it was expected by me and many others. And the maximum what they can uh, achieve at this point is to declare this or that settlement under the regime's control, even when armored group of the key regime is getting closer to some settlements and then obliterated. We see that uh, many times before, and this practice of the Q regime continues, but yet again, last 24 to 48 hours, it is becoming uh, clear that uh, Russian armed forces further intensifying clearing operation in the uh, Kursk salient area. And I expect uh, this uh, a process to get uh, uh, more and more formidable. And, uh, well, just give it another two or three weeks, by the way, and uh, I guess uh, it will become clear for everybody that uh, all this operation to invade uh, Kursk region was a fatal mistake on part of uh, NATO and on part of the regime, because this is clearly the beginning of the end of the regime's armed forces as a more or less capable entity, the regime and uh, Ukraine itself as a state, which is, by the way, celebrating Day of Independence uh, today. How ironic, isn't it, that quasi state under the name of Ukraine, this historical anomaly, basically, is celebrating Day of Independence while is absolutely dependent on a collective West from all standpoints, from all points of view. And after all, even Western, financial institutions like World Bank and uh, uh, International Monetary Fund are acknowledging that without Western financial aid, the regime will collapse in just a couple of months' time. That's how dependent this so-called state and the name of Ukraine is on the collective West. And uh, dear friends, probably, probably you will notice that uh, Western propaganda outlets and also some channels in alternative media was uh, uh, willingly or unwillingly but pushing this narrative that Russian armed forces are going to conduct some uh, unprecedented scale of their uh, long-range missile strikes uh, or retaliatory strikes on the key regimes, uh, on key regime, key regimes military and logistical infrastructure, maybe even decision-making centers in the Kyiv exactly today when, uh, when they will celebrate this so-called independence. And uh, I never find it uh, understandable logic behind that kind of narrative because why would Russia attack uh, decision-making centers in the Kyiv today when it is uh, obvious that uh, if not all, the majority of the this so-called uh, collective West countries will send their delegations into Kiev to demonstrate their unity or their support to these Nazis and the terrorists uh, that are in charge of uh, the so-called Ukraine. Uh, so why would Russia strike at this time and risk and risk that uh, well something may go wrong, one missile may fail on a different place and they take out entire delegation of one of the NATO countries, for example, <clears throat> which clearly can be then used as a, act, I mean, designated as an act of war, 
and then uh, used by Collective West for uh, further uh, escalation with Russia. Uh, I hope I explained my take, my you know, uh, on this situation. I didn't expect any large scale Russian strikes uh, on this day, and uh, we did not see, at least for now, any large scale strikes. Uh, probably it will stay this way for another day or two, and uh, well. Toward the end of next week, maybe we will see uh, some uh, retaliatory steps being taken by Moscow due to this uh, incursion into the Kursk region. Although I am still skeptical that Russian side will conduct or, or Kremlin will authorize strikes on decision-making centers in Kyiv. Uh, I mean, if Moscow had the plans like that, uh, most likely, the so-called Defense Ministry of Ukraine would be designated as a terrorist organization by now, or Main Intelligence Directorate of the Defense Ministry, or SBU of uh, Ukraine, or even the regime itself. But uh, it did not happen. Certain figures from the uh, regime are designated as the terrorists and extremists here in Russia including head of uh, main intelligence directorate, for example, Kirill Budanov. But when it comes to these so-called state institutions, sir, they have not been uh, called the terrorist organizations officially. They have not been designated officially as a, as a such. Um, and, therefore, and therefore, I'm skeptical that we will see direct strikes on the uh, leadership of the Kyiv regime now or ever, even. But I may be wrong, I don't know. Uh, but let's go back to the situation on the line of contact. So, as I said, in the Kursk salient, the situation is under operational control of the Russian troops. Uh, also, uh, Russian armed forces advancing further into Toretsk direction. And this advance is intensified because New York now is under full Russian control. And of course, more. Troops are free now to participate in offensive towards Toresk direction and their battles are taking place, by the way, in Nilepovka already and Russian troops are entered Toretsk itself and, uh, for example, we are getting reports that uh, Russian troops established control, for example, over the, you know, over the area where school number two is uh, located and, uh, well, we have uh, reports uh, about that uh, and photo and video confirmations flag was raised on that uh, building, by the way, here. So it is factual that Russian troops are inside the, inside the Toretsk. And because this settlement is relatively, relatively large, uh, I, guess, uh, I guess it will take a couple of weeks, uh, maybe a little longer before Russian troops will neutralize uh, local garnison of the Kyiv regime and also additional troops that uh, most likely will be deployed by enemy towards uh, this uh, settlement. But of course, uh, initiative going to stay in Russian hands and uh, me personally, I expect uh, I expect Toretsk to become under full Russian control in relatively short uh, time. Also, by the way, significant developments are taking place in Pokrovsk direction, which is a main direction right now and uh, we have reports confirmations basically additional confirmations that our settlement Krasny Yar is under Russian control also Russian troops are continuing advancing uh, in uh, settlement of um, uh, what is the name of that settlement man uh, Grodovka, yes, Grodovka settlement, Russian troops advancing in uh, Grodovka settlement and Russian troops uh, possibly uh, reckon and sabotage groups, possibly, but uh, whatever the case, Russian troops managed to destroy Ukrainian tank in the central areas of the Novo Grodovka. There are two settlements with somewhat similar names. Grodovka is on the northern flank of uh, this Toretsk a sector and the Novogrodovka is on southern flank and uh, formerly Russian troops uh, advanced uh, just a bit inside this uh, town. These white dots are approximate line of uh, contact or one may call a gray zone. 
But Russian troops definitely are in control of this territory, including high-rise apartment buildings, sir, these blocks, for example. And uh, somehow, then there is a video, I shared that video on my Telegram channel. Also, Russian troops managed to destroy Ukrainian tank in the central part, which may be indicator indication that Russian, at least reckon and sabotage units, are moving around their town, including in central parts, and conducting strikes on enemy forces and it seems like uh, well as we observe uh, all last uh, number of weeks it seems like the regime's defense lines are failing in these relatively big settlements also Grodovka and uh, Novogrodovka and from uh, forward positions of the Russian army towards Pokrovsk now it's about like seven kilometers no more than that so uh, just give it another week or two and probably we will we will see uh, battles begun for uh, Pakrovsky, Pakrovsky itself and also dear friends as I predicted uh, earlier Russian troops Russian troops definitely are conducting offensive operations to establish control over this fire pocket and uh, we had the reports by the way that Russian troops entered the Karlovka settlement for example Russian troops are conducting offensive operations towards Karlovka and the first several streets, according to some reports, already are under Russian control. And uh, if process continues, by the way, if process continues, I guess just give it another week or two and the entire this territory from Krasnogorovka to Karlovka will become under Russian control. It's a fire pocket right now. And uh, most likely, the regime's forces uh, will withdraw from this uh, area before they are encircled. And also, by the way, also when it comes to line of contact, I have to mention Zaporozhye and Kherson direction because rumors continue, uh, and not just rumors, but even. Uh, some high-ranking officials here in Russia, by the way, are making statements that the regime is planning to conduct a, a sectoral-scale offensive operation towards uh, uh, in Kherson, in Kherson region. Some sources reporting possibly about possibility that the regime will start a local-scale, sectoral-scale offensive operations in Zaporozhye sector of the front line, and some. Channels are going as far as to predict that Kyiv regime is planning to conduct amphibious operation towards uh, Crimea itself. Um, I cannot confirm or deny any of this information because I don't. Uh, there is not enough information in open sources to have a strong opinion on that. Theoretically, anything is possible, but if we take into account overall state of uh, Kyiv regime's armed forces. Uh, I find it difficult to believe that they be able to pull off uh, large-scale uh, or at least sectoral-scale offensive operations on any of these uh, directions in Zaporozhye, Kherson or Crimea. They might try. Zelensky definitely capable to sacrifice another one or two of the brigades, uh, any number of uh, citizens of Ukraine, really. Uh, and he might order uh, or his Western masters may order Operation Offensive to be conducted towards um, these directions, but uh, do they have any chances to succeed? That's the main question, and the answer is obvious. No, they don't. But expectations are there that uh, uh, that Kyiv regime is uh, planning to, to start another offensive operation in some uh, other directions also and uh, first of all Kherson, Zaporozhye and Crimea are mentioned although rumors are that Bryansk region may be also area where the regime may try at least to start sectoral scale uh, offensive we will find out soon anyways so that's been said dear friends I will go through some uh, additional news now and TAS news agency is reporting that According to Russian Defense Ministry, overnight uh, Russian air defense systems shut down uh, seven, seven drones over the several regions, uh, namely Belgorod, Bryansk, and Voronezh regions. And unfortunately, in Voronezh, uh, 
in Voronezh uh, area, one of the military uh, bases of the Russian armed forces was uh, hit, according to reports, uh, by fragments of the neutralized drone. Um, but that's uh, usually what uh, what Russian media is reporting that drones were intercepted and then fragments fail to certain area and uh, cause some fire or explosions or damage. Uh, okay, maybe that's the case. Maybe all drones were intercepted and just a uh, debris fail and cause a fire and explosions in uh, this military facility in the Voronezh region, or maybe. Some of the drones managed to bypass air defense systems and uh, struck their base. Uh, whatever the case, unfortunately, there are videos are circulating on the internet with, with quite significant fires and explosions in uh, Voronezh uh, area. And uh, Rio Novosti is also reporting about this uh, explosion, secondary explosions, although no detailed information is provided by Russian mainstream media about. Uh, what exactly was targeted, or what, uh, uh, by what was caused these secondary explosions and uh, so on. Although rumors on the internet are that one of the Russian airfields uh, was targeted by the regime. Let's continue. Ryanovost is uh, reporting that according to pro-Russian partisans uh, in Nikolaev region, uh, to be more precise, Sergei, according to Sergei Lebedev, who is a coordinator of the pro-Russian underground or partisans in Nikolaev region, Russian armed forces conducted a precise long-range strike on the point of concentration of uh, Kyrgyz's forces in the uh, Sumy region. Uh, this morning, by the way, in a settlement of uh, Yunakovka. Yunakovka. In the settlement of Yunakov, and according to uh, according to Sergei Lebedev, four uh, pub uh, glide aerial bombs of the uh, hit this this place basically. And uh, well, we all see what fabs can do, isn't it? If a strike was precise, then most likely the regime's forces suffered significant losses in that settlement. RT is also reporting that uh, well. Uh, Kamala Harris makes a military power promise. Uh, U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris has said that uh, she will make sure that the U.S. military remains their most little on the planet if she becomes president in the November elections. Harris made her promise in a speech after formally accepting her party's presidential nomination during the 2024 Democratic National Convention in Chicago, Chicago, Illinois on uh, Thursday. She remained reminded uh, the uh, crowd that uh, as a vice president, she had already confronted threats to uh, US security, uh, negotiated uh, with uh, foreign leaders, uh, strengthened uh, US alliances and engaged with uh, uh, U.S. Uh, troops uh, over overseas. Uh, I mean, she has a good fantasy, isn't it? it seems like she definitely has a okay level fantasies because she she's done none of it. She has no idea about foreign policy. She has no idea about uh, state of U.S. Uh, military. Uh, I mean, come on now. She's. Probably, I mean, she's better than Biden in the sense that uh, at least she can understand who, is she, who she is when, when she looks at the mirror. Uh, and uh, at least uh, she can construct some very simple phrases, very simple sentences. Uh, okay, we get that, but uh, I mean, uh, as a president of US, uh, well, I don't know, man. She will be a very comfortable candidate, and she is a very comfortable can candidate for deep state, for uh, all the shadow forces that are pulling the strings, but uh, for US public, for US citizens, such president that knows nothing and will do nothing, basically, uh, I don't know, man, I don't know. 
But anyways, uh, it, it's quite ironic, isn't it, that uh, Kamala Harris is talking about strengthening U.S. military and that kind of stuff. She also promised, by the way, to continue all the necessary support to the regime, uh, whatever time uh, or how, however long it will take. Um, okay. <coughs> Why am I not surprised? Uh, U.S. military industrial complex will try as much as they can to prolong this conflict because they are making ton, lot tons of money, isn't it? I mean, uh, they enrich themselves big time with this proxy war. You know, there's also reporting that uh, Biden had a phone call with, uh, with Zelensky. Okay, okay. Uh, He uh, congratulated Zelensky with Independence Day of uh, Ukraine. Okay. Uh, I'm just paying attention to this uh, news because, after all, Biden is still formally president of uh, US. Otherwise, I mean, who cares, man? Who cares, really? Uh, probably after five minutes of the phone call, Biden had no idea with whom he spoke to and uh, what he was uh, congratulating uh, so it is what it is man biden's administration is definitely a worst th thing that happened to us for uh, for decades man. for decades and decades the university is also reporting that uh, us uh, has imposed their new sanctions on russia and uh, 400 uh, uh, private citizens of the Russian Federation are sanctioned now and also dozens of uh, Russian companies. And uh, at this point, by the way, uh, clearly nobody cares about uh, US or Western sanctions here in Russia. And the Russian ambassador into US said exactly the same, that uh, uh, new US uh, sanctions on Russian citizens and uh, and uh, businesses uh, will uh, only further uh, intensify ho hostility uh, between the between the countries. And uh, this this step of uh, Washington is, uh, if it demonstrates anything, it demonstrates desperation of their administration there, because uh, at this point, no one really no one really cares about western sanctions sir. but you know washington does what it does man they have to please all the russophobes worldwide especially in the collective west and uh, they are continuing uh, with their uh, at this point probably all these uh, new and new sanctions packages are uh, byproduct i guess of uh, inertia they uh, gain such a speed and momentum with this Russophobia and anti-Russian actions that they cannot stop now, even if they know perfectly well that, I mean, the world is laughing at, at them. And I mean, Western ruling class and their puppets in the governments of different countries of the collective West, including US. I mean, the world is laughing, man. What, what sanctions? What sanctions, man? Just be a little bit more serious. But uh, they cannot. They just can't. Anyways, Tass News Agency is reporting that, uh, according to an article in Washington Post, the U.S. might reconsider its military aid packages uh, for the regime after Kursk invasion, and Washington Post once again is trying to create a disposable deniability for Washington, highlighting that uh, U.S. Uh, leadership, uh, military and political leadership, st still tries to understand what the healthy regime is doing in the Kursk region, as if this plan of invasion of the Kursk region was not made by U.S. generals and U.K. generals, uh, possibly with participation of the German uh, generals, right? So, uh, I mean, this is so, so poorly planned their media operation uh, on part of Washington to, to maintain this plausible deniability that it's, uh, it's really hard to even comment seriously on uh, uh, this type of uh, news that Washington will reconsider military aid packages. Really? I mean, come on now. And, and Washington still tries to understand what key regime's plans are 
in regards to Kursk region. Come on, man, be serious. It's your plan. Zelensky is your puppet, right? So whatever the regime is doing, it's, it's you doing this. Anyways, anyways, let's continue. Glad newspaper is reporting that uh, formerly uh, top EU diplomat uh, Joseph Borrell, uh, well, I guess uh, he wake up uh, yesterday and uh, yesterday or day before and uh, and uh, think for himself that he he's gonna act tough now. <laughs> he is a very tough diplomat diplomat of the EU and he come up with a statement that EU has to play a uh, bigger role bigger role on uh, on this uh, game uh, in Ukraine in Ukraine it is game for them by the way they destroy Ukraine they sacrifice hundreds of thousands and even millions of uh, Ukrainians because if on the battlefield the uh, regime already lost her uh, from five to seven hundred thousand military personnel and they uh, about 1.52 million was wounded, then significantly more citizens of Ukraine are refugees now worldwide, right? Including in, uh, in the collective Western states, including in Russia, by the way. Here in Russia, there are several million of uh, Ukrainian refugees. And, uh, and all, this, all this tragedy, by the way, that, is, uh, that we are basically observing is... Uh, it's just a game for uh, Borel and uh, such individuals like him. These puppets of the Western ruling class. And you know what? Let me translate, by the way, at least a couple of uh, sentences. Uh, and I will, I will read it in a little more detail. So European Union should join the game in Ukraine since the security of the Union depends on the outcome of their conflict, said the head of European diplomacy, Josep Borrell. And then, quote, I think that uh, what happens in Ukraine will determine our geopolitical future. We must think about Ukraine becoming participant uh, in their game. Uh, we must think about Ukraine uh, becoming participants in their game, he said during a speech in Madrid. A recording of which was published on the social network X former Twitter. Uh, Borrell stressed that the EU is uh, not a party to the conflict but is a part of it. How the conflict is uh, resolved will affect our security, he believes. Ilya Borrell expressed support for the Ukrainian invasion of, uh, of the Kursk region. So, well, EU is not a part of the conflict but uh, it's a part of the conflict. I mean, it. It's, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. And all these statements, by the way, about uh, Western involvement in this conflict is uh, nothing else but preparations of the ground to occupy, at some point, Western Ukraine. You know my take on the fate of Ukraine. I'm 100% convinced, 110% convinced, by the way, that uh, once this conflict will end, Ukraine will be divided between Russia and NATO. Vast majority, vast areas of uh, Ukraine, uh, from uh, at least from Kharkov to Odessa, will become a part of uh, Russia eventually. Will be controlled by Russia, maybe the EU and surrounding areas also. And when it comes to Western Ukraine, uh, I'm quite sure uh, NATO countries will send their troops to occupy Western Ukraine, and eventually, eventually, if on initial stages, uh, collective West will continue this game as they say and will and will call western ukraine ukraine uh, i'm quite sure after some time poland uh, hungary and romania will have a claim on the territories on certain parts of western ukraine that used to be uh, uh, part of these countries uh, historically speaking and uh, and that's gonna be it that's going to be end of story of this uh, historical anomaly on the name of Ukraine. I mean, it is what it is. And there uh, all these statements that uh, you have to play a bigger role and NATO have to play a bigger role and do this and do that. It's just the preparations, uh, media preparation, preparation of the ground to conduct this uh, 
invasion of their western Ukraine. And unfortunately, there is a high chance that uh, during this process of full-scale divide of Ukraine, when, uh, when NATO will start also uh, conducting its operation in western Ukraine, there is a high probability that at some point we might see clashes, direct clashes between uh, Russian and NATO troops. But uh, still, I think uh, it's going to be local scale. It's going to be localized and uh, will not trigger full scale conflict between Russia and NATO. I'm quite sure about it. But uh, when it comes to Ukraine itself, uh, yesterday they are celebrating in, uh, in you know, so called Independence Day. But uh, probably. Last time. Probably last time. And there, there is no way anybody can really take Ukraine as an independent state, man. Let's be real here. Ukraine never was independent. Uh, it was historical anomaly always since Bolsheviks created this uh, republic inside the Soviet Union, mainly on Russian territory, on, on the land of Russia. And eventually, eventually, of course, uh, during the Stalin era, uh, Western Ukraine was taken from Poland, uh, Czechoslovakia at some point, Transcarpathia before uh, First World War used to be part of Hungary, but then uh, that territory became part of Czechoslovakia. So Soviet Union took Transcarpathia from Czechoslovakia and gave it to this uh, historical anomaly, Ukraine, Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic. And there are... Significant territories, territories of Romania was also taken from Bucharest and uh, given to Ukraine. And uh, on uh, former U Romanian territories, by the way, Moldova was created. Also former Soviet Republic. So, okay, uh, enough hi historical excursus here. Most likely, most likely, this is, uh, I mean, last time when uh, when uh, EU and you know celebrates uh, this so-called independence of Ukraine. Uh, most likely, in, in next year there will be no Ukraine on the political map, or give it a couple of years maximum. Uh, anyways, uh, RT is reporting about uh, statements of Russian former president and current security. Uh, current uh, deputy chairman of the Security Council, uh, Dmitry Medvedev, who said basically that uh, Russia is saved from a uh, talk trap due to this Kursk invasion and the terrorist activity of the Kyiv regime. And uh, well, let's go through this news. Kyiv's decision to launch an offensive on Russian soil has uh, benefited Moscow since it can no longer be pressured to compromise for sake of peace, former President Dmitry Medvedev has suggested Ukrainian troops occupied some border areas in the Kursk region this month in a move that the country's leadership claims would strengthen its position in uh, eventual peace talks. However, President Vladimir Putin has ruled out negotiations with Kiev following the incursion, accusing Ukraine of targeting Russian civilians during their attack. And uh, Putin also spoke about terrorist nuclear terrorism of the Kyiv regime when uh, Kursk nuclear power station was targeted. So, uh, to continue with statements of uh, Medvedev, Medvedev, who serves as deputy chair of the Russian Security Council, argued that Russia should take a more hardline position in response to their incursion. In my view, there was a theoretical threat of uh, a lock talk trap which our nation could fail into under certain circumstances. That is unnecessary early peace negotiations offered by international community and imposed on the key regime. He wrote on social media on Wednesday after the neo-Nazis committed their act of terrorism in the Kursk region, every peace got into the place, he added. Everyone realized that uh, there can be no talks before the enemy is fully defeated. Medvedev lashed, uh, lashed out uh, specifically at Britain, at the United Kingdom, and its former Prime Minister Boris Johnson, who enthusiastically welcomed Kyiv's move uh, to invade the uh, Kursk region. The UK has uh, 
hurt Ukraine a lot with its support since uh, it led to unnecessary destruction and the loss of life, Medvedev said. And uh, this is absolutely correct. Western ruling class, not just UK, by the way. Yeah. I mean, Western ruling class, first of all, and their puppets, including in UK's government, in 2022, 2023, and now, of course, uh, of course, harm Ukrainian society and Ukraine like, uh, I mean, on unprecedented scale because they sacrificed them. Western ruling class and their puppets in governments of collective West clearly sacrificed millions and millions of Ukrainians, all of them basically, citizens of Ukraine and their country also. And when it comes to statements of uh, Medvedev about uh, this talk trap, it is, uh, I can understand logic behind this uh, statement. And after Kursk invasion, by the way, I don't think uh, uh, any country out of the Western world will uh, have any issues with, uh, with Russia if uh, special military operation not just continue, but if uh, Russia will start using some extreme force even. Because everybody understands that Kyiv regime is not negotiable. And forces that are behind the Kyiv regime, Western ruling class, I mean, you cannot negotiate with them. You can only force them to accept objective reality. That's it. And, and uh, that's how st things gonna develop. Of course, eventually, the regime will capitulate. And that will mean uh, capitulation of the Western ruling class also. They only understand the uh, language of force and uh, Russia will speak to them with the language of force. Just, just give it time. And uh, dear friends, before I continue, before I continue, let me... Uh, notice if I may that this channel, um, or I should say this small media project of mine with several channels on YouTube, Rumble, Telegram, is completely subscriber funded. And uh, well, this is this is full time job uh, for me to to work on this project. And uh, if you if you like what you see, if you if you uh, think my my channel, sir. My work is uh, is interesting, useful, and uh, deserves to exist in this field of news and political commentary. Please consider to support with small donations through PayPal, uh, Boosty, uh, by the way, or by subscribing to my Patreon page. Uh, uh, all the links, all the links are under this video in the description box and in the pinned comment. And dear friends, when it comes to Patreon. Yesterday I start making uh, first episode of uh, of new program that I will have on Patreon and uh, and Boosty behind the scenes and uh, because we just moved to Moscow uh, I was unable to do some montage yesterday to upload that video so I will add some more videos today and uh, if, you know at least tomorrow morning I will upload uh, that video on Patreon and the Boosty. And uh, it's going to be, as it said, behind the scenes, sir, how yesterday and today uh, went. Um, it's going to be informative in terms of news and also uh, quite dynamic. Hopefully, community will find it uh, interesting. And of, of course, I have ideas to make more and more uh, extra uh, content on, uh, on Patreon. And the boosty. <clears throat> okay, that's been said, dear friends. As I said, all the links are on this video in the description box and the pinned comment. I will continue with some other news. And, and for example, this one from RT that uh, prison sentences issued for an uh, anti Semitic riot uh, in uh, Russia. So, Russian court has uh, handed uh, lengthy prison sentences to five men conv uh, convicted of uh, participating in 2023 anti-Jewish riot in the Muslim majority region of Dagestan. Uh, probably many members of our team will remember that there was some riots uh, in Dagestan uh, in uh, 2023 and uh, it was a uh, quite unpleasant scenery, uh, of course. Uh, and, uh, well, Several high-ranking officials here in Russia basically claim that uh, these riots were organized from outside of Russia, most likely with their active participation of secret services of, uh, of Ukraine. 
and uh, and I believe that was the case and the Q regime and the Western masters of the Q regime definitely are trying to use all means they can reach all means they have to destabilize situation in Russia uh, but anyways anyways on Friday a court in the southern city of Armavir sentenced uh, these uh, five men to between six and uh, nine years in prison for uh, rioting and uh, assaulting officials according to their court uh, they were motivated by national and religious uh, hatred when uh, they joined the mob all of their defenders had denied her any wrongdoing uh, and as i said some officials had suggested that the riot may have been incited from uh, from abroad and it was incited from abroad i have no doubts about it and uh, when it comes to penitentiary system uh, of course many members of uh, our community already informed uh, i think that uh, yesterday in volgograd uh, region there was a hostage situation when in one of the penitentiary system facility uh, four uh, terrorists take hostages uh, unfortunately before a uh, special operation was conducted to neutralize terrorists they uh, winded and killed uh, at least four at least four uh, people um, although eventually special forces conducted their conducted their operation to neutralize terrorists and all all of them were neutralized unfortunately unfortunately uh, as they said by the way western ruling class is using any means they can to destabilize situation and uh, i think because this is a second time we are seeing that kind of situation uh, there was in rostov hostage situation also in a facility of penitentiary system and now in volgograd region i think uh, this activity of uh, terrorists and uh, all sorts of radicals definitely can be traced back to u.s secret services first of all CIA because uh, majority of terrorist organizations are created by CIA or with participation of CIA right and one may also mention MI6 that is also unfortunately together with her I mean CIA I mean biggest if you are looking for biggest and most powerful terrorist organizations no need to look any further than CIA and MI6 I mean it, it's just factual isn't it it's factual I'm not exaggerating even the slightest RT is also reporting that uh, Kennedy endorses uh, Trump um, that's quite interesting isn't it Kennedy was basically denied to run for Democrats and uh, he is endorsing Trump now not surprisingly really because uh, I mean establishment of democrats is uh, i mean something <laughs> something else man something extraordinary uh, worst of the worst i will say so robert uh, f kennedy jr has announced uh, he would back republican candidate donald trump and uh, and his independent run for president but only in swing u.s states the son of uh, Senator Robert Kennedy and uh, nephew of the President John F. Kennedy first uh, tried to challenge President Joe Biden for the Democratic nomination last April faced with uh, obstruction within the party. He announced a third party bid uh, last October. Many months ago, I promised the American people I would uh, withdraw from the race if I become a spoiler, Kennedy said on Friday afternoon. In my heart, I no longer believe I have a realistic path to electoral victory. Kennedy said that uh, three major issues led him to leave uh, the Democrats. Uh, free speech, the war in Ukraine, and the war on our children. Trump, he explained, has adopted uh, these issues as his own to their point where he has asked to enlist me in his ad administration. The party, two of his uh, generations helped build, has become uh, the party of war, censorship, corruption, big farmer, big tech, big money. 
can uh, be stated and uh, how anybody can argue with uh, with this i mean it is true by the way i mean and corruption i, I understand corruption is a, is a big topic everywhere there is no country in this world that has no issues with corruption but what is happening in us by the way this is really out of this world because corruption is legalized there corruption is uh, literally legalized in us and politicians have been brought and sell as if uh, just some sort of product you know good on a shelf all the of the supermarket that's how bad things are in us and i mean it, it, what kennedy is outlining is is absolutely correct and it's not just democrats by the way let's be clear about it this uh, big uh, these multinational corporations military industrial complex uh, bank bankers or financiers uh, i mean basically they brought both parties they financed both parties right democrats republicans and they are creating this show for people to create illusion that they have some choice there when in reality both parties are brought by this uh, behind the scenes uh, actors and uh, they are running the show right they are in charge in reality but people i mean they have this illusion that there is a competition you know democrats republicans this candidate that candidate they are voting and uh, they think uh, everything is okay while in reality uh, if anybody has any doubts by the way after biden's administration how can uh, be any questions that uh, us is run by some shadow forces I mean, biden barely can understand who he is for god's sake when he see, you know, looks at the mirror so what decisions he was making none absolutely none anyways anyways let's continue glad newspaper is reporting that uh, china demanded from us to stop uh, uh to stop uh, escalating uh, with uh, china stop uh, to stop uh, armed taiwan and uh, and facilitate basically this uh, this uh, divide between or encourage divide between uh, Taiwan and the mainland uh, China. Um, this was stated by Chinese uh, embassy in uh, in US and uh, in response to visit of Taiwanese uh, uh, officials to US. And well, unfortunately, this is not happening. And this is not happening. Western ruling class sees China as their main threat for their dominance. And they will continue to escalate with China and they will use their any means necessary to uh, brought China down, even if that means uh, provoking self world war. That's how crazy Western ruling class is. And that's why I'm saying that Western ruling class is an existential threat for humanity. You may don't like that China is a, is a major economical force in this world now. And with economical dominance comes political influence also. It's just undoubtedly the case. But, uh, and what then? And what? The US is also a major economy and has huge influence. But that not, but it does not mean that uh, we should be in support of some, uh, some uh, constant uh, escalation between the major superpowers right but tell this to western ruling class i mean this planet is is big enough for all of us for god's sake and we should live in peace not in this constant war man but western ruling class has no reverse gear by the way they they are not gonna stop until they are stopped by force and they are existential threat for humanity and i hope western societies will majority in the western societies will realize that sooner than uh, later the is reporting that uh, 
Well, Russia and Afghanistan are planning to further increase cooperation in the agricultural sector, which is good news, by the way, which is good news. Of course, Afghanistan, Afghanistani people are experiencing significant difficulties due to, I mean, decades and decades and decades of uh, occupation and the war, wars, uh, including uh, internal confrontation. And uh, therefore, uh, uh, therefore, of course, uh, it is, it is right that our neighbor countries with uh, Afghanistan, and even though Russia is not directly bordering Afghanistan, but we are in the same region, uh, we might say. Uh, after all, Russian border guards are presented in, uh, in Tajikistan, in some other, and, and Russian troops are basically presented in, uh, in Russian interests in the former Central Asian republics. Uh, when it comes to troops, not everywhere, but when it comes to interests, obviously Central Asia is in a sphere of Russian strategical interests. And uh, those regions are bordering with uh, Afghanistan, those countries. And therefore, of course, Russia has uh, every reason to, to do whatever it takes to uh, be helpful for Afghanistani people, to, to stabilize the situation there and to make sure that relationships between Kabul and Moscow are on a... Or are on a good side, on a good uh, uh, level. So yes, it's uh, it's a good that cooperation is uh, taking place. Uh, recently, there was rumors that Russia will most likely remove Taliban from a list of extremist or terrorist organizations. Uh, it will be done. I have no doubts about it. Eventually, and uh, and uh, it will definitely make easier to cooperate between uh, between the governments of the two countries and I mean yet again you might don't like it but Taliban is in charge in Afghanistan they are the government of Afghanistan right now and uh, you cannot ignore that as if uh, this territory is non-existent so therefore uh, me personally I think this is good stuff by the way that uh, that Russia and uh, Afghanistan are planning to increase increase uh, uh, trade between the countries in, in next year already up to 3 billion US dollars, which may not be a big sum, by the way, when it comes to trade between the two countries, but uh, this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning, and I believe BRICS member states can and will most likely do uh, take her significant steps to be supportive of Afghanistani people and uh, Afghanistan. Ria Novosti is reporting and I will end this update on this uh, quite interesting news also. Why not? Because according to data, orange juice, by the way, orange juice hit record high in prices uh, and, uh, and because of it, we should expect, we should expect her well, orange juice on our table to become a bit more expensive. Unfortunately, though, I mean, uh, of course, orange juice is, uh, is one of the most popular in the worldwide. And, uh, well, inflation, by the way, inflation. We should expect now this product to go, on, go up on prices again. And dear friends, dear friends, this is it uh, for now. Relatively long update. Uh, well, I was hoping that uh, this update would be a little shorter, but hopefully you will find it informative and interesting. And if so, please click that like button and leave some commentary just about anything. This is uh, this is only way we can try at least and influence or try at least to influence algorithm. It's not guaranteed, obviously, but at least we can try it to influence algorithm uh, to reach wider audience and for very same reason dear friends if you can please share information about my channel in real life with your friends or on internet on the platforms that you are actually using uh, and uh, yes this is it for now if you like my work uh, if you want to support you can do it uh, all the links are under this video in the description box and in the pinned comment once again have a great day wonderful uh, weekend and uh, See you tomorrow. Take care.